So every year I try to make sure to take time out to watch one of Paul Washer's most important sermons, and I think you should too, and that is his shocking youth message. A link to the sermon can be found in the description of this video if you'd like to watch it. Now I'm not going to say that this sermon was his best sermon of all time, but I will say that it's probably his most significant sermon to date, and I say that because of the sheer effect that it had. The part of the sermon where the audience began clapping and then he stopped them in their tracks by pointing at them was so profound and bold at that time that it captivated me to the point where I had to watch the sermon like two or three times in one sitting. Uh, the first time I watched this sermon was way back in 2012. I believe it was maybe six months after I'd been saved, and I'll never forget how shocked I was by the sheer boldness of his preaching. I knew immediately that there was something different about how Paul Washer was preaching and what he was saying. Even if I couldn't explain it at the time because I was a babe in Christ, I knew that what he was saying was truth, and it, it, something about it resonated with me. I was a new convert at this time, and up until this point that I had found the Shocking Youth message, I had been listening to false teachers like Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes. But I knew immediately that Paul Washer was not like any of the false teachers I had been listening to, and so this began my journey into seeking out Reformed preachers. Now, the truth is that most pastors are cowards and are not concerned with the glory of Christ and seeing souls won to Christ. They're more concerned with their own reputation. And for this, I thank God for courageous men of God like Paul Washer and for what he does not being afraid to offend people for the sake of the gospel. I watch things I shouldn't watch on television and laugh about the very things that God hates. I wear clothing that is sensual. I talk like the world. I walk like the world. I love the music of the world. I love so much that's in the world. But bless God, I am a Christian. Why am I a Christian? I don't look any different than most of the other people in my church. Why am I a Christian? Because there was a time in my life when I prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I want you to know that the greatest heresy in the American evangelical and Protestant church is that if you pray and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, he will definitely come in. You will not find that in any place in Scripture. You will not find that anywhere in Baptist history until about 50 years ago. What you need to know is that salvation is by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. And faith alone in Jesus Christ is preceded and followed by repentance. A turning away from sin, a hatred for the things that God hates and a love for the things that God loves. A growing in holiness and a desire not to be like Britney Spears, not to be like the world, and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. I didn't come here to get amens. I didn't come here to be applauded. I'm talking about you. The Reformation was founded upon sola scriptura. And I want you to know, brethren, I love the Reformers. I love to read the Reformers, but I'm really getting tired of that language. The Reformers didn't call themselves Reformers. They just wanted to be biblical. And you can sit in Starbucks all day long with your skinny jeans on and talk about Reformers, or you can pick up a Bible and start getting biblical. And I don't know why you're clapping. 